Hey guys, and welcome to the Heat of Combustion Lab. In this lab, you are going to be figuring out how many joules per gram of heat are being generated by this paraffin wax candle as you burn it. Now, what you're going to have to do is transfer the heat from this candle into a calorimeter cup. Yes, I know it looks like a soda can, but we don't have the money for big expensive calorimeters, so we're just gonna have to make use with this. So what you're gonna have to do is just heat the can with the candle, but you need to have something in the can to heat up. So you're going to use water, because water has a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius which means that every 4.18 joules you put into a gram of water will be enough to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius. Now, how much water you put in here? Anywhere between 80 and 100, I really don't care. You don't have to get it exact. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this up with a certain amount of water. I'll show you what the volume is so that you can record it. Now, we're gonna take that water and we're going to place it into this calorimeter can, and then we're gonna suspend the can with a thermometer suspended into it and record the temperature before we light the candle. We're gonna let the candle burn for 10 minutes and then after. We need to let the candle burn for 10 minutes because it doesn't generate a huge amount of heat and water does heat up very slowly. So we have to give it plenty of time in order for this to work. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, go ahead and record the volume of water that we're going to put in the calorimeter cup. And here's where you do it. If you look at your lab, there's a data table, and right here on your data table is a place to put the volume of water in your calorimeter can. So that's where you will place your measurement. Now we also have to weigh the candle before we heat it and the candle after we heat it. And then we're gonna also have to put the initial temperature of the water in the calorimeter and then the final volume of the water in the calorimeter. So we're gonna put all those measurements in these spots. So go ahead and put that volume of water right here. And then we're gonna get some masses. So we place the candle on the balance. And then we are going to adjust the sliders. Okay, so there we are. So record this measurement. All right, so that's the mass of the candle before we burn it. So now we're gonna have to burn it. So let's have a look at what comes next. Let's get ready. We have a ring stand with a ring. We are going to take our can and we are going to add the water to it. Make sure it all gets in there. So we have that mass in there. We will then suspend this water through the ring, like so, and lower it down until it is just above the candle. Now we don't want it right on the candle or you'll, sm <laughs> or you'll smother the candle. So we don't want that to happen. Let's just get it right down there. Okay, and then we have to lower the thermometer down into the water, but we don't want to have the thermometer touching the bottom of the water. Oh dear, that's not good. So now we want to lower the thermometer down into the water, but we don't want it all the way at the bottom of the can. We don't want to measure the temperature of the metal. We want to take the temperature of the water in the can. So I'm going to put it all the way to the bottom and then I'm going to lift it up. And now before I light the candle on fire and let it go for 10 minutes, go ahead and record 
the starting temperature let's get this so you can see it record the starting temperature of this water that's 20 there by the way zoom around here see it's 20 so go ahead and record that starting temperature of the water okay now we are going to let this roll for 10 minutes so I need to get a timer okay so let's light the match get the candle out from underneath light the candle slide the candle underneath and start Okay, now that 10 minutes have passed, let's read that thermometer again. Raise it up just a little bit so you can see it. There we go, read it quickly before it drops. That's 40 and 30. Okay. And then you'll take that final temperature and place it where it says final temperature of water in the calorimeter. Now the only other piece of data we have to get is the mass of candle after heating. So let's take care of that. So we don't spill any of our candle wax. Stop swinging. Let's record the mass of the candle after burning. And there you have it all the data you will need to finish this lab. So, what comes next in this lab? Let's show you. Now, you're going to have to put down some calculations that will result in you having the heat of combustion of the candle in joules per gram. So you're going to need to make sure that you're calculating joules, and joules per gram means joules divided by grams. Let that help you in your calculation. Now I provide you with far more spaces than you may need. So what exactly is it you're calculating? Show a correct numerical setup with proper units and show a properly rounded answer. Then what is the heat of combustion in joules per gram? This is the accepted value for heat of combustion. Calculate your percent error. And thinking about the design of a bomb calorimeter, which you will find on the first page, the bomb calorimeter, what is it about the design 
in our setup that may have led to our percent error. If you need to go back and look at the setup again, again, just move to any point in this video you need to in order to do it. That's everything you need to complete this lab. Bye.